All right, well, good evening, everybody. It is Wednesday, April 3rd. Holy smokes. Uh, welcome to our regularly scheduled Zoning Advisory Commission meeting. I call this meeting to order. Uh, Jason, will you be taking roll? Yes, I will. Chris is excused. Lorman? Here. Mulligan? Here. Martin is excused. Russell? Here. Zucchero? Here. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm sorry, Chair Mulligan, before we begin, could I just mention that we do have um, an online option for a meeting tonight, so I do think there are maybe one or two applicants on there. I just forgot to make you aware of that prior to the meeting, so just um, FYI. The applicant is online? So is it? Yes, this will be for our first item, oh, the, the okay. plat of, yes, and I'm sorry to jump ahead, but I just wanted nope. to make you aware of that. You're good. Thank you. All right, can we confirm we're in compliance with the Iowa Open Meetings Law? Yes, we are. Very good. All right, so commissioners in front of you, we actually have two uh, sets of minutes for March 6th, as well as our special meeting on March 13th. Um, let's see, I'll, we had some modifications from earlier today. Have those been reflected? We have, yeah, we have not made those. So um, those were specifically for the March 13th meeting. Okay. Um, so we would just want to make note of that and any approval moving forward okay. and then staff will. We didn't bring a revised version, but we will certainly make the amendment. Okay, so what I would propose then are um, a motion to approve the 6th as submitted unless you see a change and then uh, approve the 13th with the exception of the notation made by, I believe that was you, Terry, who noticed that. Yeah, and if we could do those as two separate motions, that would be great just for- Oh, sure. Yep, yeah, thank you. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the March 6th meeting minutes for the okay. Zoning Advisory Commission. Okay, we have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Okay, very good. Jason? Lorman? Aye. Russell? Aye. Zuccaro? Abstain. Mulligan? Aye. Okay, March 6th is approved. Um, entertain a motion for the 13th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the March 13th minute uh, meeting noted the changes that I stated earlier. Should I state them? Please. Allowed? Okay. So it was just stated that um, Commissioner Martha Christ was present and I was not here. So Martha was listed as both present and excused. So um, I was present and Martha was excused. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Russell? Aye. Zucchero? Aye. Martin? Aye. Mulligan? Aye. Okay. Enough of that, right? Let's move on to some action items here. So our, we've got two action items. We've got three public hearings. Uh, so thank you for those of you coming this evening. Our first uh, item is a simple subdivision. And I believe our applicant is online. Is that right? Correct. Yep, okay. Callie. Callie, if you are, can you hear us okay, Callie? Um, I see she's off. not Wait, muted. Does it say audio is off? Uh, the audio is through the room, so what you're seeing here shouldn't reflect. So Callie, we're having a hard time. We're not able to hear you. <laughs> Um, okay. Oh, Kelly? Yeah, now I'm on. <laughs> Good. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Kelly. Thank you. So just yeah. think before about a year ago, we held all of these meetings via Zoom, right? So <laughs> yeah. you can imagine. It's frustrating. <laughs> all right, Callie. So we are on your uh, item. So here's what I'd ask. Yeah. If you'd state your name, your address, and specifically what it is you're asking for from the commission, that would be great. Okay. Um, Callie Welter, address is 16836 Hannon Road, Holy Cross, Iowa 52053 and we are just um, platting out the area I'm hoping you have a map um, yep of 
part of that property for right now. All right, let's see. So, yeah, Callie, we do have the map in front of us. Okay, okay. so it looks like a just a simple subdivision of what you're doing, right? Yeah, as of now, we're sort of undecided if we're going to continue with us doing the simple subdivision, um, but for sure wanting to parcel off what is sh hopefully shown on that map. Um, like, it's it's a pretty big chunk, I guess, if you can see. I wish I could see what you're looking at exactly, but um, is Dave, did Dave get on, Dave Schneider? Uh, no. We don't have Dave, but what we do see is a uh, lot one of 5.92 yeah. acres, right? Yeah, and then, um, yeah, for now, that is that is all we're, I guess, asking for. Okay, that sounds good. Um, well, if you were in the room, I'd ask you to take a seat, but you can take a seat. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> any questions for our applicant? Okay, seeing none. Um, Staff report, Travis? Yes, Assistant Planner Travis Schrobelgen. Um, so as the applicant stated, they're looking to create two lots from what is currently three lots. There is a house currently on that kind of central one that's being highlighted now, um, and a garage, and those two buildings are gonna be kind of parceled off on their own, six acre, approximately six acre lot. Uh, the remaining would be um, a second lot. There is a county easement for the roadway uh, Lost Canyon Road to the, on the south side. Um, and then there would be a public um, utility easement and access uh, easement there for subject pro, uh, lot one parcel and then potentially any future and if that was the way it went in the, in, in the future. Um, so because lot one does not have lot frontage, it requires ZAC and city council approval. And that's why they're here today. And then the city has oversight of this. This is in the county. Um, but it's within the two-mile extraterritorial jurisdiction. So um, staff recommends approval, subject to waiving the lot frontage for lot one. That's all I have, unless you have questions. Okay. Thanks, Travis. Any questions for staff this evening? All right. Well, seeing none, I will entertain a motion for approval as submitted. I'll make a motion for Approving the application for a waiver for frontage requirements of this uh, lot, lot division. Okay. Did you get that, Jason? Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Terry. Zucchero? Aye. Lorman? Aye. Russell? Aye. Mulligan? Aye. <laughs> Okay, that motion does pass. Callie, thank you for coming this evening. I Let's see, this will go to City Council on 15th? April 15th. Okay, very good. Thank you, Callie. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> very good. Okay. <laughs> Went off without a hitch. Uh, and I'm sorry, Chair Morgan. I will see. I do see that Dave Schneider is online. Um, I just want to let Dave know that that item was approved. If he has any questions, he was with the plat as well. Just want to make sure he's aware of that. Dave, can you hear us? All right. He's well, moving up. Dave, if you can, it's approved. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next item: site design waiver. Uh, before I dive into this, Travis, I believe. Due to us having four this evening, we would have to have a an affirmative of all four for this. That is correct. Four. Okay. For Sounds the waiver good. of site design standards, yes. Very good. Okay. So site design <coughs> waiver for 1100 Lincoln Avenue is our applicant here this evening. Oh, perfect. Oh, dear. Okay. Did we hear anything from the applicant since uh, no, the submission? We have not heard anything that I they wouldn't be I spoke with the here. property owner today, oh, and he you. said a representative from Beezing was going to be here. So perhaps they're running late. Maybe we could jump to another portion of the meeting, okay. um, Very even, good. even the public hearings, and we could come back to that at a later, right. at a later time. Well, right now we'll pause on item number two. We're going to move on to our public hearings. We've got three of those. Um, 
Well, geez Louise, it's the same property. Correct. Okay. We should probably wait on that for Great. public hearing item as well. Okay. We're going to move on to item number two uh, of the 2529 Marywood Drive uh, to rezone property from R1 to an R2. Um, is our applicant here this evening? Okay. Very good. Come on up. <laughs> so you'll state your name, state your address, and what it is you're asking for from the commission. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Dakota Schilling, uh, 12346 Swiss Valley Road, PS, Iowa. And uh, we were just looking to uh, rezone the church and the house to be able to rent them out. So don't sit down yet. I'm sorry. I'm trying to catch up you. here. <clears throat> There we go. Okay. I'm sorry. Do you own the property now? No, we were looking to purchase it. You'll be the one but buying this it. This is like the contingency. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So we're rezoning from an R1 to an R2. Um, okay. Sounds good. Any questions for our, say your name again? Dakota Show. Dakota. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Dakota. Um, why don't you go ahead and so this is a public hearing so why don't you have a seat for a minute here and the way that this will work is being that it is a public hearing i'll open it up for any comments uh, from those of you in the room in favor or not in favor um, so with that i'll open it up excellent seeing none i'll close it all right so let's move to our staff report uh travis is that you it is. <clears throat> Assistant Planner Travis Schrobelgen. Um, so the subject property was brought into the city in approximately 1960 to 1963. Um, initially in 1963, there was a building permit for the residential structure, um, which is right at the corner and on the south side of the property. Um, and then in 1973, the church building was created. And at that time, it acted as a church with a rectory, um, which is permitted in the R1 zoning district. Um, the property in 1975 was zoned as R2, and then it was uh, down zoned to R1 between then and 1985, and it's remained that way ever since. Um, the last couple, I think about a year and a half ago, this property came up for sale. Um, we've got a lot of calls about it, um, and part of the problem is that it's on a single lot. Um, so anybody looking to uh, convert the property, reuse the property, they need to either be a church or they go through some reviews and approvals. Um, some of those are, would include if you're going to um, use the property, even as single family residences, like if you're gonna separate them and make them uh, single family, you have two routes to do that. You could subdivide the property with a property line and, and then um, you'd have, it's already R1, but to do that, you need to separate um, sanitary sewer, you'd need to separate the water and you'd have to handle it, obviously, each as an individual property. Um, in this case, the property is going to R2, um, and that would allow both of them to be on the same lot without dividing those, those utilities. Um, it, obviously, the, the applicant chose to go to the rezoning route. It is much cheaper, um, so that's what they're here asking today. Um, generally speaking, um, this could be used right now as a church. Um, somebody could come in with a church use and we'd have to do a little digging on how many seats were in that previous church, but they would have a credit for parking um, and they could utilize the property as a church, as stated. Um, given uh, that's kind of a uh, not as likely as just being divided into residential properties, um, the applicants go in this route and in order to rent them out, separately as two individual properties. They need to be their own addresses and rezoned. Um, uh, not sure what all we got here, but... Um, so they would be restricted to lot coverage if they were to add any buildings to the property. Um, redevelopment would go through some staff approvals. Um, if not, if they're gonna do a full redevelopment, then it would go through development review, especially if they're gonna do a number of units. Um, hypothetically, with R2, they could, after the fact, then 
subdivide the property at most, at the very most, and this is not proposed, but at most it would be four uh, dwelling units. Um, and even four dwelling units is less than less activity than a, a standard church. Um, so in that regard, the staff doesn't have any, uh, doesn't expect or anticipate any long-term issues with parking or anything like that. Um, we did receive one public input. Um, it seemed there was some confusion. You do have that in front of you. Um, I think they thought a clinic was coming into this location, um, given the property owner's name. It says clinic on the application, so um, there may have been some confusion there, but this is just going from uh, one single family residence on an R1 property to two single family or the duplex on an R2 property. Um, I think that's about all I have, unless, unless you have questions. I just wanna clarify the comments in the letter. Um, yeah. So an R2 would not allow a healthcare facility on this <laughs> no, lot, correct? No. I just wanted that to be No, we, I do have a, a list of permitted uses here. Um, Sheena, if you wouldn't mind scrolling yeah. up. Um, it's pretty limited. I mean, R1 is the only district that's more limited, and the only difference is the two units that are allowed in the bottom two lines there. So if this application were to be approved, it would mm -hmm. still not allow a healthcare facility to operate on this property? Correct. Okay. Where did that come from? Wait, what's that? The, name. the notion. Oh, the, the Clar Clarity Clinic is the technical owner of the property, so that's on the application. Right. So um, the I think that's owner. the list in the current owner, correct. So they'd be actually selling it. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. I, good question. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Any questions for staff? All right, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to rezone property at 2529 Marywood Drive from R1 single family residential to R2 two family residential. Very second. Good. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. Jason? Lorman? Aye. Russell? Aye. Zucchero? Aye. Mulligan? Aye. Dakota? Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to... That will continue to the uh, April 15th uh, City Council. Very good. Yes. I will go to City Council on the 15th. I know you were waiting for that part. All right, let's move on to item number three, a text amendment from the City of Dubuque regarding the Jackson Park and Cathedral Historic Districts. Is that you, Sheena? It is. All right, very good. Good evening. Sheena Moon, Associate Planner. Um, so what we have uh, before the commission this evening is a proposed text amendment to remove the off-street parking requirements uh, for properties that are located within the Jackson Park and Cath uh, Cathedral Historic Districts. Uh, so this, uh, this text amendment is being proposed really out of um, our desire and goals to preserve and to um, maintain our historic neighborhoods. Uh, we, um, obviously the city uh, uh, values the historic neighborhoods. We really want to emphasize and make sure we're able to preserve the existing structures and sites that make these districts um, uh, valuable and uh, a resource in the city. Um, what we're seeing from time to time is that oftentimes a property owner might want to revitalize their property, maybe rehabilitate, or perhaps um, look at ways to adaptively reuse their property. Uh, and the topic of parking often comes up as a potential challenge and or um, barrier to moving that forward. Uh, so we really want to, we want to support the preservation of these structures, allow for people to reutilize the properties in different ways, maybe in some instances make modifications, um, but not necessarily allow parking to be a, a a barrier to them being able to do that. Now, in some instances, property owners might um, find that they are maybe looking to pave additional areas of their property to provide additional parking. Uh, and when we say additional parking, we're generally talking a space or two. We're not uh, overall these these um, these districts are on uh, the properties in these districts are mostly developed. They're often two to three story residential structures. Um, maybe perhaps that have been some that have been converted to maybe office use or more of a commercial use or a mixed use. Um, and so sometimes we're seeing that people are then uh, alternatively, if they can't get the parking on the property, uh, perhaps looking to um, 
request a variance to the city zoning board of adjustment. Um, and while there hasn't been any, um, you know, overall um, opposition to those variances, we really, again, want to help property owners be able to adaptively reuse and revitalize their properties and remove any potential barriers to that. And so that's really where this text amendment is stemming from uh, initially uh, to give property owners a little bit more uh, opportunity. So um, I've kind of ran through the background here. Um, again, I've, I've talked through most of this, so I won't reiterate this. Um, uh, want to talk about what this amendment would do. So again, it would remove the off-street parking requirement for property. So, so what that would mean is if a property owner, let's say, wanted to revitalize a portion of the building or re, re, um, um, rehabilitate a portion, let's say they're adding an office space in, uh, now it's going to increase the parking requirement by one space. Um, we'd be looking at where can they where can that one space go? Can they provide another property? Do they need a parking variance for it? And this is just a, an example. Um, what this would do is say that you don't need to provide that one space. That can be provided through um, available on-street parking um, and available public parking as far as well as private parking uh, in the area. And I do have a few maps that I'll show you just as far as the availability of those um, parking opportunities. Uh, so what this does not do is um, you know, allow a property owner just to remove every parking space that they have on their property. The goal is not to remove all the parking and say you don't need to have this and you can just continue to develop the whole thing. Um, we would really look at what is the existing condition, maintaining that existing condition. This would really be for anything um, above and beyond um, if they were, again, making improvements that required an additional space or two. Um, many properties in the downtown area have uh, are what we call legally non-conforming with parking. So um, as in these districts specifically, there are a number of properties you know, that are fully developed. The buildings extend to the property lines or near the property lines. Uh, and let's say if that building were built today, it might have a requirement of eight parking spaces, um, but we consider that legally non-conforming. These buildings were built prior to current codes, obviously. Um, those conditions would continue to be able to be maintained as well, those legally non-conforming conditions. Um, so this would really just provide some relief from additional parking requirements uh, for the property owners in these districts. Uh, and the proposed tax amendment would modify the parking requirement language um, in our R2, R2A, R3, R4, OR, OC, OS, and C1, C2, and C3 zoning districts, um, which are the ones that we primarily see in that downtown area. Uh, one of the maps that we wanted to share with you uh, was just showing um, uh, the C4 district, the C5 zoning district, as well as the Millwork um, district planned area development or planned unit development. These are districts in the downtown where parking is already not required. So off street parking is not required uh, to be provided in these districts currently. So this um, proposal would be an expansion of that into the dark outlined areas of the, uh, of the Jackson Park and historic or cathedral rather uh, historic districts. Uh, so just wanting to show that that is already a, a condition that exists in the downtown area with respect to parking. Um, and again, we wanted to show just what the existing zoning is. And as we mentioned, uh, when looking at this, we wanted to cover the zoning districts, uh, amend the language in the zoning districts that are within these uh, districts. There is some overlap already with C4 uh, in a couple portions of the um, of the Jackson Park and Cathedral Historic Districts, and those properties in those existing uh, C4 areas uh, would currently be, um, would fall under the same exemption, if you will. So no off-street parking requirement for uh, additional parking. The other thing we wanted to share with the commission was um, just a couple maps in each district of uh, the parking conditions. So these are both of the, uh, as well as the transit options or opportunities. So in the Cathedral Historic District, you can see on the left here, uh, the little blue dots are showing parking meter locations. Uh, the red lines are showing um, uh, generally street parking. And then we do have a residential restricted parking area um, around the cathedral uh, area there. Um, that area does require permits uh, for property owners that live uh, on those streets. Uh, so this would not impact the permit. This would be a, this is a separate um, text amendment. This does not impact the city's current metered spaces or um, uh, uh, parking restricted or, or permitted areas, those would remain as they currently are. 
Um, and so then on the right hand side, you can see just the transit routes that are running through this district, as well as the transit stops in and around the Cathedral Historic District. So there is access to public uh, transit there. And then again, the same two maps for the Jackson Park District. On the left, we have our unmetered street parking locations, which is a good uh, majority of the northern section of this district. And then also those metered spaces um, throughout other portions. And then on the right here are transit uh, routes as well as transit stops in the Jackson Park Historic District. Uh, and so we also wanted to provide a little bit of information about the public parking lots. Uh, in the downtown here. So um, the lots shown in yellow are the public lots uh, and then the, the blue outlines uh, public ramps that are currently um, in proximity to these two historic districts uh, as well as we have um, just an overall community parking area. So this map actually shows both public and private parking um, lots and uh, throughout the downtown area. So as you can see, there is um, quite a bit of opportunity for parking uh, that is um, um, with, uh, throughout the downtown area uh, and adjacent to these districts specifically. And then um, one of the things that we also did a little bit of research on um, was the number of variances that have been um, approved for these, um, you know, related to parking in these districts. Um, and over the last approximately, I'm going to pull my data here, um, approximately uh, from a 20-ish years, we've had a total of 18 cases go before the um, Zoning Board of Adjustment. Um, those vary in number of spaces. I think a couple that were on the larger side and are probably more of an exception to the rule were for like the Boys and Girls Club, um, which is a larger facility that has a larger draw. There were a number of uh, parking spaces that were a part of that variance. Um, and then we have that that example all the way down to you know an average of one to two spaces uh, for a number of the other cases. So we we don't anticipate this is going to um, you know result in a an abundance of additional parking, right? We don't think this will be a catalyst for that necessarily. Um, so just kind of taking into consideration that there has been kind of a steady flow, but not um, an excessive amount of applications over the last twenty years. Um, so we do have that data as well uh, that we've pulled out. Uh, I will say that we have received a number of phone calls on this matter, uh, approximately I'd say 12 to 13-ish uh, phone calls, um, a lot of people just wanting general information about what the proposed text amendment is. I did receive a phone call um, today from um, Dan T Daniel Templey, who owns property at 1573 Main Street. Uh, he did express opposition to the proposed tax amendment, um, stating his concern uh, that this could potentially result in additional density in the downtown area, in the Jackson Park District specifically, um, and that that concern um, was not having enough on-street parking available in the event that this density um, does increase. Uh, and so he was in opposition of the proposed text amendment for that reason. Um, uh, and I just have notes on that. He didn't submit anything else in writing, so you're not going to see that in your packet. Um, but if, um, just checking to see. So that that's, um, I'm sorry, let me go back for one second. So the other thing I did want to hit on was just um, that generally these districts are viewed as walkable pedestrian oriented districts in the downtown downtown rather um, there is uh, we believe uh, numerous on street parking spaces as well as access to public parking uh, and as I mentioned earlier the transit lines and transit stops uh, we do feel that this text amendment is in keeping with the goals of the city of uh, the city's comprehensive plan um, one recognizing just the importance of our historic preservation and our adaptive reuse um, also, um, looking at both, uh, and I'm going to read through these, but illustrating the tangible economic and sustainability of, of benefits, direct and indirect, and induced to the city's economy and working and community from the work done by historic preservation programs. Um, when properties are redeveloped as appropriate, work to reorient development to the street rather than separating it by street or uh, the street by parking. So again, really allowing property owners to maintain those green spaces that they currently have on their properties, um, as big or small, um, creating vibrant, vibrant environments where people can live, work, play um, within walking and dice, uh, biking distances to their home, encouraging mix of affordable housing. Um, we do think this could create opportunities for some additional units in the downtown area. Um, uh, so keeping that in line with that goal, 
Um, and then um, just again, in creating and encouraging walkable mixed use developments. Uh, we believe it's also in line with the city council's goals uh, and priorities to promote livable neighborhoods and supporting opportunities for creating new housing within the city. Um, and with that, I uh, staff is happy to answer any questions that you may have, but I have nothing further. That was a mouthful. That was great. I think it's great. I love that it extends as far as it does. I think it will promote, you know, as somebody that redevelops a lot in the Millbrook district, that parking is like the number one hurdle that would prevent it. So having that flexibility is, is pretty important. So thank you. Thank you. Any comments, questions for staff? Okay. I'll entertain a motion then. I'll make a motion to amend the Unified Development Code to remove the off-street parking requirements located in those two historic districts. I noticed that it also stated it's not fully going to remove the OC one, but reduce it. So I'm sorry, what was that? It's not fully going to remove the OC requirement, but... The oh, you say OC oh yes Office yes center. actually that's an important distinction let me grab that language sorry to so. put that in motion you're correct <laughs> so um, it what yeah and let me clarify that's a great point so what this does is it basically says for any any OC, any zoning district under this amendment that's not within these historic districts um, we'll still have to look at providing the minimum parking requirements under chapter 14 of our unified development code, oh. except for those properties located in, in these historic districts. So the language is written that way. And then you're correct, the um, OC district does have some uh, additional language with respect to uh, that does allow for a 25% a reduction. Again, that would apply to properties outside of the Jackson Park and the Cathedral Historic Districts. So you're correct, those standards will remain for OC properties outside of these districts. Okay. Now that is specifically called out in the request or in the text amendment, correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. That's outlined in the staff report. And then as well as in the ordinance, that language is laid out. Okay. So again, yes, this, this exemption would just apply to those properties in the historic district within those zoning districts. Does that make sense? The text amendment includes this other piece, right? Which, that I'm sorry, maybe I didn't follow Commissioner Lorman. Which those, those pieces are existing right now. So there's oh, the current yes. language. All Thank it's you. doing is tagging yeah. on the exemption yeah. for historic districts. Okay. Yeah, so to Travis's point, currently, for example, in, let's just, uh, let me grab my staff board here. In the, here we are. In the R2, R2A, R3, R4, OR, OS, C1, C2, and C3, the language in those codes, in those sections regarding parking reads, minimum parking requirements shall be regulated in conformance with the provisions of chapter 14 of this title, period. We are adding except uh, for properties located within the Jackson Park, okay. and et cetera. And then for the OC district, it reads um, that first sentence, except that a 25% reduction shall be allowed in the OC district for both permitted and conditionally permitted uses. That all exists um, and then we're adding and except for properties located within Jackson Park. Okay. So it's that last set, that last portion of each uh, of each section there. Thank you. I hope that's clear. I'll make a motion to amend the Unified Development Code to remove the off-street parking requirements for properties in the two historic districts noted. Thank you. Second. Very good. Russell. Okay. Aye. Zucchero. Aye. Lorman. Aye. Mulligan. Aye. All right, that motion passes. Okay. Thank you, Carrie. Do we have enough? What's that? Did you have something? Um, well, so for, for the 1100 Lincoln Avenue cases, it is possible to hear them in absentia of the applicant or property owner at your discretion. You know, I was gonna propose we just table them and allow the applicant yeah. when, That's fine too. when yep. this means enough to them, they can yeah. come talk about it. Yep, great. So let's see, we, we would want to take a, a motion Correct. on each of those. So if one of you could, I lost my other page, but make a motion to table the action like item and then a motion to table the public hearing, that would be great. Two separate? Two separate. Correct, yep. 
Mr. Chair, I make a motion to table the site design waiver at 1100 Lincoln Avenue. Second. Okay. Zucchero? Aye. Russell? Aye. Lorman? Aye. Mulligan? Aye. All right. Do we have a motion to table the public hearing? Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I move we uh, table the rezoning request for 1100 Lincoln Avenue. Second. Lorman? Aye. Zucchero? Aye. Russell? Aye. Mulligan? Aye. Excellent. All right. Very good. That was the fastest five items. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any items from the public? Seeing none. Any items from the commission this evening? Good to see you all. Any items from staff? No. Nope. No. Okay, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Second, or, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn the, the zoning <laughs> advisory <laughs> commission meeting. <laughs> Second. <laughs> that was perfect. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Aye.